most open to others that we owe our survival. This dependency is most obviously in early childhood and in old age. But between this first and last stage, our lives are characteristically marked by longer or shorter period of injury, illness, uh, or other dis dis uh, disablement. A moral agent who are themselves re uh, presented as though they, are, uh, as though they are, were continuously rational, healthy, and, uh, and, and troubled, when we do think of disability, we tend to think of them uh, as other than us, as a separate class of dependents, uh, not as ourselves, as we have been, sometimes are, being, uh, are now, and maybe uh, they will be in the future. So, uh, Oh, yeah. Is that here? Oh, okay. Next one. Okay. Now, uh, uh, returning to the worrisome outlook for an entrenched African dependency, here's my last question about the moral agents who believe it is their responsibility to look after African, Africa's destiny. There's obviously the Western liberal consensus. The clamor of objections surrounding uh, the Chinese presence in Africa on a number of fronts. China's record on governance and human rights. The overriding of uh, principles of openness pursued by Western donors. The outrage over Chinese implicit support for Africa's corrupt and rogue leaders. Besides this, uh, there may be a Western leftist consensus uh, to which uh, Taylor showed affinity. Uh, sharing perspectives with the Waldo Rodney, uh, Samuel Amin, and Debbie Harvey on the uh, reproduction of African dependency. But I think, you know, uh, these two Western, uh, you know, usually uh, produce negative uh, headlines about China's emergence in, in, in Africa. Uh, however uh, profound is this uh, uh, negative uh, headlines, they are quite contrary to the balance of opinions surveyed by a Pew Report uh, across some 10 African countries, according to which favorable views of uh, China outnumber critical judgment by at least, at least two to one in almost every country. Uh, to those Westerners who see China as merely using Africa for its own political and economic ends, and to Taylor's sincere warning against believing in the win-win rhetoric. Actually, here, I, I agree with Taylor. But, uh, yeah, to, to the various kind of uh, uh, paternalist uh, moral agents, uh, Denisa Mobio rather points out to the straightforward view that they have what we want, and we, we have got what they need. So, bartering infrastructure for energy reserve is well understood by the Chinese and Africans alike. It is a, a trade-off, and there are no illusion to who, who does what, to whom, and why. Okay, here, I'm uh, quoting a story uh, from uh, uh, Deborah Brian. Uh, here is a, uh, his opening story of her speech, The Dragon Speed, the real story of China in Africa. Okay, uh, yeah, you can, you can find it in YouTube, uh, on YouTube. I, I think this, uh, I will, first uh, will uh, will uh, underline uh, the morals, uh, her morals of the story. And then I will draw uh, my morals for the subject of uh, unchar uh, uncharitable and ungrateful uh, from, uh, from, from the, uh, the aftermath, the unsay, uh, you know, of this, uh, of this story. Once upon a time, there was a very large, very poor, but resource-rich country just emerging from a pre period of violent conflict. They decided to focus on development. They said, we need to modernize our infrastructure. We need to build our railways. We need to import new technologies. 
and soon they have a visit from a large, wealthy Asian country that had already become a major consumer of their oil. And this Asian country offered them a bargain. We will give you a line of uh, credit of $10 million, and in return, you can import our technologies, and our company can develop your mines, and they can build your infra infrastructure. Many in the poor countries uh, were suspicious of this large Asian power, but they agreed to the bargain and, and the work began. So which two countries am I talking about? Of course, one of these countries was China. That's not, uh, not a surprise. China was the large country with, with oil. They were just emerging from the cultural revolution. And the wealthy Asian country was Japan. And this was 30 years ago, when Deng Xiaoping first proposed it in the 1970s in China. He was widely criticized. It was very controversial, but it prevailed. And China went to prosper, and this relationship helped. This was not altruism on Japan's part. The $10 billion offered as a line of credit for China in return for Japanese companies to come in, a, 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 to, come in to develop coal mines and so, uh, so on was not foreign aid. It was not concessional. But most importantly, China's leader saw this as something that was useful for China's development, and Japan was was pleased to get access to China's oil and sell them technologies and services. And the rest, as they said, is history. Okay. China is offering the same bargaining to many countries in Africa today. Leverage what you have uh, if, if what you have is natural resources. Uh, we are interested in it. Oil in, in Congo, sesame in Ethiopia, cocoa in Ghana, use this to build telecoms power stations, railways, and roads that you believe to be necessary to your country's uh, development. Okay, the story. So, uh, to underline uh, what is the moral of uh, the story. 40 years ago, Deng Xiaoping did not heed anything like a protective warning against the entrenched dependency and decided to go otherwise. To be sure, there was a theoretical vision for that decision. Neither modernization, theory, nor dependence of theory. Of course, it's, it's uh, uh, neither communist ideology. Uh, although it, it, unacknowledged, it was Dr. Sun Yishan's the international development of China. Firstly, firstly uh, published in English in 1920, the uh, and then translated it, uh, into Chinese version. Shi published in 19, uh, Chinese version published in 1921. Two features of Dr. Sun's vision stand out. First, inviting foreign capital and the technology from all over the world to develop China. And second, priority in infrastructure building, uh, infrastructure building, including seaport, railway, highway, mining industry, and river transportation. So by the late 1970s, this vision was this vision was no longer merely th uh, theory on paper. To Deng Xiaoping, it practically, uh, it, its practical efficacy had been demonstrated by Taiwan and other East Asian Thailand. So, but again, the uh, story ends here, uh, as she said, uh, the rest is, is history. But I want to draw from the unnarrated aftermath of the story, a moral for my own subject, the uncharitable and the ungrateful. In 2008, uh, I invited uh, Kawashima Shin, Chen Daozhen, this Chen Daozhen is an expert in China-Japan Japan relations from Tokyo, Tokyo University. Uh, the subject of uh, his talk was about the dramatic reversal of the mutual effective attitude toward China and uh, uh, Japan. The reversal happened just about the time when China rising began to resound. Uh, before it, uh, more Chinese and Japanese had favorable views toward each other and viewed positively the, inf uh, the influence from the other. Uh, not unlike presently, the large, uh, largely positive view of African and Chinese toward, uh, toward each other. Not only Japan. 
the influx of Taiwan and Hong Kong based business to mainland China, to which they, they brought capital, technology, management, know-how, and above all, jobs and the initiation of capitalist work ethics to mainland workers were as well viewed positively, desired, and attracted with intense competition among various cities and the provinces. Likewise, at the time when the hype of China rising began to build up, the attitude toward Taiwan and Hong Kong-based business turned sour and cold. Quite many entrepreneurs who devoted their best time for over three decades in mainland China felt chilling by the ungrateful attitude toward them if they did not, uh, did not met the worst uh, fate of suffering merger annex annexation by their pirating offshoot. Comparably, by, uh, as uh, George Soros once lamented, they seem to have forgotten those positive experiences and Marshall Plan had become, to, uh, for Europeans, uh, had become a dirty word. So quite effective assurance uh, inevitable. Uh, if the BRI in Africa is indeed viewed as uh, straightforward, as a model characterized, of the, uh, as we just said, then uh, uh, as a bartering infrastructure for energy reserve, a trade-off trade uh, a trade -off well understood by the Chinese and the African alike, no illusions uh, to who does what, to whom, and why, then there should be minimum emotional, uh, emotionally charged objections of, uh, of uncharitable and ungrateful. However, effective assurance seems inevitable. Uh, in a two-day two summit held uh, sub September 2018 in Beijing, attended by leaders from 53, 000, uh, 53 African nations when Xi Jinping pledged another 60 billion to African countries. He, he, had, a, uh, he had to disclaim about the app apprehension that it is a vanity project, while against the concern of debt trap, he had to insist that the generosity over Bill and Road is genuine. Now, what, why do I assume uh, the retreat of the BRI? Uh, yeah. Okay, the BRI carries a personal signature of uh, Xi's ambition. And other uh, such kind of similar projects, Xiongnan, Xinqu, uh, you know, Ziyong, those, those very, uh, you know, very, uh, carry the signature of Xi, uh, dream. It appears to many Chinese as remote as conspicuously wasteful spending spread. Profitable, uh, profitable, profitable only to an insider circle. This is very important. Uh, or the, uh, those young uh, intended uh, state-owned uh, uh, firms, and then uh, the back, uh, behind behind it, the share, the major shareholders, uh, you know, uh, principals or more uh, uh, from maybe uh, tens or uh, one to two to hundred families. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, in contrast to the backdrop of a not yet rich China, where hundreds of million people, I would say that about uh, um, 550 million uh, people still not uh, properly educated I mean, uh, in, in, in China. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There is a uh, problem. Uh, so, uh, in spite of uh, the nation, nationwide propaganda to paint it rosy, there is unpopular and often resentful domestic reception. Moreover, facing plans from countries receiving BRI funds and uh, piled up tumbling blocks and uh, backlash along the Belt and Road, we have raised several, uh, several uh, in, in our formal uh, morning session discussion. Uh, along the Belt and Road, uh, so skeptics, uh, domestic and abroad, grow amongst academics, uh, economists, and business people. This is the context from which I assume that the political conditions for the Chinese proverb remain generally relevant. When a man in power dies or falls from power, all the political measures he made will cease. That's my assumption. Uh, I, I don't think with all those messy problems uh, and difficulties, including the, uh, the 
the lack of uh, financial uh, uh, to, to sustain it. Uh, I always, I, I would think, no matter what, uh, who will succeed, uh, Xi Jinping is uh, is quite unlikely that uh, we are not on uh, this uh, project. Okay, uh, China's emerged in China uh, in Africa since early 1990s was a story predated the BRI and will be a story survives the retreat of BRI. Presently, there are in Africa more than 1 million Chinese migrants and about 10,000 Chinese pri uh, private enterprises. Uh, there are mutual enhancing relations as well as uh, fatal competitions. These part are more a more interesting uh, of interesting part of this of the story. The form of uh, the form of instance, uh, I, I can very uh, just raise a very uh, uh, brief uh, few things. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so the former, for instance, African farmers benefit from Chinese agriculture experts and uh, fish farm techniques. The later, for instance, uh, for instance, the Chinese show retailer, uh, retailer importing from Zhejiang could put out of business an entire street of local show shops, which conventionally imported their styles and shows from Italy, and, uh, and tragically resulted in the murder of the Chinese business. Similarly, the more efficient chicken farm uh, run by Chinese migrants could threaten the, threaten the survival of uh, local chicken farms. And the micro, uh, at the micro-ethnographical level, the life of Chinese migrants living among Africans is indeed a bittersweet or tragicomic, fact beyond an abstraction of either uh, uncharitable or uh, ungrateful. But, uh, yeah, I'm closing to, uh, to, the, to my conclusion. Looking for a scenario otherwise than that of, of an entrenched African dependency. I, I, I truly, uh, I actually, uh, I, I'm very agree with uh, Ian Hagen on his, uh, uh, his uh, view that uh, the spatial temporal fix uh, like BRI uh, is only can, can only be temporal. And uh, ultimately, it would, uh, it would be a lost steam or uh, exhausted. I, I have uh, I told you the same, the same uh, view on this part, on the Chinese part. So, so your quote from uh, David Harvey, uh, I will agree, because that's, uh, that addressed uh, the China's uh, actually uh, problems right, in the future. But, uh, but here, I have uh, some hard, uh, hard different uh, outlook on, uh, on Africa. Uh, yeah. Today, there are many countries naming China as their largest trading partner. When China slows down, all of them suffer. Uh, so, Africa is uh, not an exception uh, and not an example. Uh, vulnerable to the volatile commodity price, African countries are neither exception nor exemplar. China, stand, uh, uh, China stands as the largest foreign investor in Africa. It's true. But it is not the only one. India, Russia, Japan, Turkey, and the, and the broader Middle East are not far behind. So, and then uh, the BRI is not uh, not the first, not the only, and not the first uh, initiative about trade or uh, uh, infrastructure corporations. Uh, in 1993, Japan kicked off kicked off initiative, the Tokyo International Conference on African Developments (TICA). Uh, in 19, uh, yeah, okay. 2000, uh, in 2000, uh, year 2000, the U.S. Congress passed the African Growth and Opportunity Act, uh, and and now being extended to uh, 2025. This is a very important uh, favorite uh, act for for African trade. Okay, uh, then 2007, the Joint African EU strategy was uh, in 2008. Uh, the India African Forum Summit was firstly held. Uh, so, 2013 uh, comes China's uh, uh, BRI, is not the only initiative uh, on the info, yeah, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, and, but probably because of these, uh, these uh, BRI uh, initiative, uh, it may have catalyzed uh, or reactivated, energized those, uh, those uh, uh, existing initiatives above. So, a post-colonial, post-apartheid Africa are now forging ahead for a continental free trade area.
the, uh, the, the uh, African uh, Union, I, I, shall I say that? Uh, the, uh, and then the East African uh, Federation, Romney, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, uh, Tanzania, and Uganda is now drafting this constitution. So these efforts, uh, like uh, yet, uh, yesterday, I, I, uh, I raised the question to Ian Hacking, uh, uh, imagine, imagine him, uh, him to be a prime minister of a, a certain African country. What uh, alternative uh, he can do? He said that he was looking for the regional integration. So the regional integration are, uh, are underway. And uh, in, in terms of progress, are much better than other regions like the Central Asia. So uh, besides, many Afri African countries are resourceful in relevance and tourism. Oh, okay, yeah, so, uh, so that, that's, that's a, uh, you know, a, a roughly prepared uh, PowerPoint. Um, I think maybe I should just uh, uh, start with this. I think um, we can take a, um, a break first. Um, following to clear our minds, it's that time of the afternoon when as much as you're trying to concentrate, you might physically be unable to, not have no fault of your own. Um, so let's get some coffee, um, I think maybe like seven minute, seven minute break, and then when we come back, um, we can get a chance to respond. It's a lot of directed in response to you. Yeah. 